Hey fangirls and boys, this is Natalie and you're watching Whole Lot of Love and today's video is a first impressions trying a couple of different very exciting products on the makeup junket so to speak. So the first products that I try that I'm really excited about are Lady Gaga's House Laboratory products. So I picked up a few products from the line, especially like one kit which was called House of Rose Bitch and this is what it came in because I got the little kit. I got this really cute makeup bag. It's not a huge bag, but it has this like suspended like confetti in it. It's really cute, really, really nice. And it says House Laboratories, all huge here. In the kit, I got the Glam Attack Creamed Powder. Um, it's like a liquid eyeshadow, but I guess you could use it on the rest of your face as well. This is in the shade Rose Bitch. And it also comes with a lip liner called Drag, which is on my lips, and a gloss it's in the shade Enchanted. So those, I used all of those from the kit in the look. I also picked up another liner in the shade Rye, which is more of like a terracotta, reddish, your lips look better kind of shade. And the liquid cream to powder eyeshadow in the shade Legend, which is more of like a old gold kind of shade. And finally, I also picked up the eyeliner in the shade punk which is just a bl matte black liner what it looks like it's a felt tip liner it's a little bit bigger and i'll just do some strokes on my hand so you can see so that's kind of like the finer points right there and then you can kind of go deeper like it gets very very thick so you can see once i kind of like add more pressure and use the side of the applicator a little bit more it gets very very thick the line so you can kind of do like a thicker line or a thinner line so that's one thing that's pretty cool about that. So those are the products that I got in the House Laboratories line. Also, they kind of all come in these components, which are like silver, like an ombre silver to black component. Everything felt really nice. Nothing was overly luxurious feeling or overly weighted, but nothing really felt like light or flimsy. The packaging was very, very nice and unique. And overall, I definitely enjoy the feel of these products. So you'll get to see how these products perform on me and my thoughts on them and in addition i also try out the new pat mcgrath mothership six this is the midnight sun variation so i also try out this palette in the video to kind of complete the eye look because this has some mattes in it so in addition to using liquid eyeshadows i also use this palette to really you know build up and complete the eye looks so you'll see how this performs and my thought of, thoughts on this as well. Anyway, if you are interested in seeing how the products from Pat McGrath Labs and House Laboratories, I think that's so fun. It's like some super art star art, you know, very artistic fun makeup lines. This is laboratories, it's super fancy. So anyway, if you want to see how the Pat McGrath Labs and the House Laboratory products perform, if you are interested in seeing how I got this look, then keep on watching. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I have the Pat McGrath Mothership 6 in Midnight Sun. So I've already done my brows and primed my lids with the NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil in Milk. And I'm going to start my eye look. I like this palette better than the original one. I think I had the Sublime, the Mothership 2. That was the first one that I got and I wasn't as crazy about that one because I felt like there weren't any like matte transition shades in that one. Um, but this one has a couple of like nice mid-tone mattes in there so I have a lot to work with in the crease which is good. I'm going to go into this shade over here first and I'm using the Morphe X Jeffree Star. This is the JS8 brush. It's stained from my one of my last looks bright red but I wiped it off so it should be fine. This is your pretty standard like tan, light brown, medium brown transition kind of shade. So I'm just gonna work this above the crease. And I'm really loving the brushes in the Morphe and Jeffree Star collection. They're just such nice shapes. This is kind of like a little fluffier than I would normally work with, which I kind of like because it makes things look a little blown out, but it does have the taper, which is good for my smaller hooded lids. So that is how the first shade looks blended above the crease. I think that that was pretty easy to blend and it was pretty pigmented, so I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go into this shade here, which is like a rusty, slightly deeper reddish kind of shade, like a brick shade. There's a little bit of um, kickback, but it's nothing too crazy. And I'm just gonna go kind of underneath in my actual crease using the same 
Morphe Jeffree Star JS8 brush. Yeah, these eyeshadows are really pigmented. So I don't know if you can see that, but I'm definitely having a little bit of sticking there. That can always have to do with like you, the primer that you use if it's not fully blended out. Like if I had a little excess in like a certain spot, it could be getting caught. Or even this brush, but it's a little bit suspect to me. I'm not loving that. That's really getting stuck there. And I have some fallout as well. I'm definitely noticing a little bit of sticking on both eyes. It's definitely worse on this eye, but it's not completely absent on the other eye. So that's telling me that it has to do with the eyeshadow a little bit or maybe even the eye, way the eyeshadow interacts with this the NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil but I usually don't have a problem with that I'm gonna take the Morphe, this is the JS10 I believe yeah the JS10, this is my favorite in that collection I'm gonna take this shade right here which is just like a champagne-y, satiny, metallic shade I'm just gonna hit the brow bone with that a little bit because I feel like especially on this eye I went all the way to the brow so I just wanna kind of brighten that area up a little bit. That shadow is nice and pigmented. Pat McGrath shades definitely are not lacking in pigmentation. I'm not adding any extra product. I'm just going back into that fluffy brush and kind of blending that out because this shade was so pigmented that it just kind of like, I almost like drew it on. Not bad, not bad. I'm gonna use, this is my Morphe M506 brush. It's just like a really small tapered blending brush and just get along that edge even more. I'm not always crazy about Morphe brushes and the quality. I feel like they kind of like fall apart a little bit easier than most of the brushes that I really like to use, but I love the unique shapes. I feel like they really get it good with like different shapes that could work for like, you know, you could find any, you know, different brushes that would work for your eye shape, brushes that you don't normally see. Okay, so I've done most of my crease work and I highlighted the brow bone. I think that that looks pretty decent. Um, so the part that we have all, or uh, certainly me, has been waiting for, I'm gonna dig into my house laboratory products. And the first product I'm gonna go into is this Glam Attack All Over Liquid Shimmer Powder, and this is in the shade Rose Bitch. I absolutely love that name. This is what the component looks like. It has that pyramid tip that all of the components have in this line, and I really like the packaging. It's really nice. I know you're supposed to kind of shake these up. I don't know if they have like a little ball in it. This one doesn't really make any kind of sound, maybe a tiny little bit, but I know you're supposed to shake these up, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And this is what the applicator looks like. It's just like an angled doe foot. It's kind of slim. And I love this detailing. It's also on the gloss I've noticed. It's just like the wand is clear. I love when I see that. I think it's like a really nice touch. Makes it look a little more fancy than if they just did like something white or black for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my... This is the um, JS10 Morphe Jeffree Star. And I'm just going to coat my brush with this. Instead of going directly on the eye, I want to make sure I have like the most control possible. So rather than going in with the wand here, I'm going to go in with this tiny little brush. And I'm going to start working in the inner corner over here. So that is how that liquid powder eyeshadow looks on the inner corners of my eyes. It's kind of sheer, but it's like a pretty kind of crystally topper kind of effect, which I think is pretty nice. It's like a subtle kind of deal. It's nothing too intense and it's definitely, it's very liquidy, so it's easy to blend out, which is really nice. I'm just gonna do a swatch of this on my hand. So this is what this product looks like over here. And one thing that I noticed about this is if you rub it, it kind of like activates the like little like micro glitter shimmeriness in it. So it gets like even more glittery and intense. It looks really gorgeous. Like it's just so multi-dimensional, like sophisticated. It's not like super chunky glitter at all, but it's definitely very, very shiny and reflective and really pretty. And I feel like if you were to go in with the applicator, you can kind of even build up the intensity a little more. But I think for what I'm trying to go for and just trying it out, I do like the way it's looking right now. So I'm gonna leave it at that also like very wet looking because the shimmers are so like fine and it's kind of like more sheer it definitely has like this really like wet look to it which is kind of pretty like glossy almost so the next product i'm going to go into is another glam attack all over liquid shimmer powder and this one is in the shade legend which is like the old gold shade in the line 
So first I'll swatch that one out. I haven't swatched this one out yet, so I don't know what it's really gonna look like. I didn't shake it, so it's kind of patchy. This one, I definitely hear that little ball in there. This one might be a little bit thinner even than the rose bit shade. That's the shade Legend over there, swatched on my hand. It's definitely similar. It's very reflective, sheer, but definitely has a lot of those little like micro glitters in it. This one has a little bit more of a metallic finish. The um, Rose Bitch, I would say, is more of a sparkly finish, but they both have that shimmer micro glitter. It's just that this one might be a little more of a, like a metallic base and the sparkles kind of match a little bit more than this one has like kind of like silvery sparkles and this one has like the gold sparkles that match the pigmentation itself. Actually, no, I lied. What I wanna do is I wanna go back, before I go into Legend, I wanna go back into the Pat McGrath Mothership Midnight Sun Palette, and I wanna go into that shade, which is, I think, the eye catcher, the star of the show in this palette, this purple shade over here. Especially because I have like, kind of like a more lilac-y, mauve -y purple in the inner corner, I wanna transition into like a slightly deeper, more cool tone purple in the center of the lid. Cool to see how this layers over the liquid. This is like a kind of like a creamy, I guess it's kind of like a baked shadow for it being like a powder it has a little bit of a creaminess to it. The finish is actually pretty similar to the liquid eyeshadow. Definitely has that multi-dimensional micro glitter shimmer thing going on. Not as sheer, but definitely a very similar finish. So those are working really well together. Like see how that looks. It's very pretty. I'm really liking this shade and I think it's looking nice kind of over top of the liquid. It doesn't look weird. It's not bunching up in a weird way. I'm gonna go back into Rose Bitch for a second just to kind of layer that over top a little bit at the edge where I put down the purple Pat McGrath shadow just to blend that out and punch it up a little bit more. Blend it out and punch it up. I feel like that's kind of contradictory but just layering. That's what I have going on so far. I think that that looks really pretty. It's a really nice, shimmery, sparkly, wet looking, sheer thing going on. Now, I feel like I do this a lot. Now I'm gonna go into the Legend shade. I'm so excited about that gold. With the same Morphe Jeffree Star JS10, I'm gonna coat the brush and I'm gonna go more towards the outer part of the lid. This shade looks really pretty. It's really punchy. The Rose Bitch shade is very, I was just thinking the Rose Bitch, Bitch shade is pretty sheer. Even as you build it up, you can only build it up so much. Like it's pretty, but it doesn't pop as much. It's like, I feel like it would be better as like a topper. I mean, this one's kind of similar, but it's a little bit more punchy upon initial application, this Legend shade. I'm gonna go back into the purple shade a little bit and Pat McGrath and just blend over this. So this is what I have going so far. I think that that looks pretty nice. Again, as I kind of layered it, I feel like it is similar to the Rose Bit shade, the Legend shade, in that it is pretty sheer. You're not getting it to be like this full opacity, punchy pigment. I think that this will layer really nicely on top of similar eyeshadow colors of that shade, just to really kind of give that multi-dimensional wet look to something that's more pigmented underneath, but like on their own, it's a little bit more of just like a wet, sheer kind of look. And that's just something to note. I'm gonna go back into my Morphe M506 brush and I'm gonna take a little bit of this shade over here, which is kind of like a black and brown shade. And I'm just gonna deepen up the outer edge just a little bit. I put so much eyeshadow with the Legend that I don't have a lot of space, but I just want a little something just to conceal that edge a little bit more and just to deepen up just a little bit. I don't wanna to lose too much of that Legend shade either. So we're just gonna really, really slightly pat this on the outer edge. And that's why this brush is great, because it's so small. So that's how that's looking with the deepen, like that black and brown to deepen up a little bit. I think it looks better on this eye than on this eye. It's like the blending of the liquid and the powder is a little trickier on this eye, but I think when we're done with everything, it'll be fine. I'm gonna go in between these two shades, this um, brick red shade and then this tan transition shade. I'm just gonna grab a little bit of those two on my brush with the same Morphe M506 and just go along the outer edge a little bit. Just to kind of keep those in the look and keep everything blown out and blended.
I'm gonna finish things up and just, you know, put on some, you know, liner and lashes and kind of try to bring the look together once and for all. So I'm gonna do the liner. I have the House Laboratories. This is the Eye Liner. And this is in the shade Punk. It's just a black shade. And it has that same pyramid tip. And this is what it looks like. So it's a felt tip and it's a big daddy. It's definitely bigger than your typical felt tip, but it does have a very fine point. It's not like really like a marker, so to speak. Um, so it's kind of like good for like more thicker, more intense um, wings, if you will. But I'm gonna try to just keep it not too crazy. I don't wanna mess this up too much. I tried this for the first time yesterday. I'm gonna shake it up a little bit. I'm gonna, I tried this for the first time yesterday and I feel like I had to do like a correction because I didn't get it quite right because it's, it's a little bit different than what I'm used to working with. I usually work with the Kat Von D. Tattoo liner and troop, which is more of a fine tip, it might not even be felt. That might be a brush tip, I'm not sure. But and this one I will say is really nice and matte. That's the first eye done. I think that looks pretty decent. Now let's go to the second eye. I feel like when it comes to wing liner, I would prefer to be a cyclops. And any eyeshadow really, because always one eye comes out better than the other. But I guess that would happen. That just happens because you're, you know, there's always going to be that comparison. And this eye is a little bit more scrunched up and hooded than this eye. This is like my good eye, so this one usually comes out better. Not always, but usually. There is a little bit of transfer, but I kind of blinked a lot faster than I should. It should be fine once I, I'm done with the look. Okay, I'm done with the liner on this eye. I think that that is not the absolute most sharpest, best, beautiful looking liquid eyeliner, but it's not bad. I'm gonna leave it at that. I don't want to correct and make things worse, which I am wont to do. Anyway, I am going to do mascara on the upper lashes and put some falsies on and do some concealing under my eyes. I'm going to do all of that off camera and I will be back to kind of work on the lower lash line and continue on with my face with you guys. So we are back. I am wearing the Ace Beauté faux silk lashes in the style Calypso and I've concealed and I also use on my waterline the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Eye Pencil in the shade Alkaline. That's just like a plummy wine shade. And I'm going to work on the lower lash line. So I think for the lower lash line, I'm just going to go back into this shade over here, this brick red shade. I'm going to take my MAC 219, dust off some of that excess. Just work this on the lower lash. Now that I have laid down that reddish brick matte on the under eyes with a pencil brush, I'm just going to blend that out with my Morphe M506 brush. I'm done with the lower lash line. I think that that looks pretty good. Well, I'm done with the eyeshadow. I'll put some mascara on there as well. But first, I'm going to go into this shade, which is like a really like bright champagne-y baked shade in the Pat McGrath palette. I'm going to take my Morphe Jeffree Star JS10, and I'm just going to put a little bit of this in my inner corner. Put some of that excess. Just want to hit this very slightly. So that is how that baked, bright, champagne-y shade looks on the inner corner. I didn't want to put too much because I want to keep the Rose Bitch liquid shadow in the look. But I'm going to finish my lower lashes. This is the It Cosmetics and Dry Bar Lash Blowout Mascara. So I'm done with the eyes. I think they look pretty good overall. It's just a very, very shimmery, glossy, pretty kind of look. Just some golds and lavenders and like a warm crease. Nothing too... It's a little smoky, but it's not too edgy because it just has like those nice sweeter feminine tones. So I think that that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. I am going to do my foundation and the rest of my face off camera and I will be back to finish off with the House Laboratory lip products.
Okay, so I have the rest of my face makeup on and I'm going to finish off with lips. So I have a couple of products from House Laboratories here. I have two of the RIP lip liners. I have the one in the shade Drag and I also have the one in the shade Ride. So I'm going to swatch those out for you now. Again with that same pyramid tip. It's a wooden pencil. So this is Ride. Right there, it's just like a kind of like a terracotta, corally, reddish pink kind of shade. It has a little bit of a nudeness to it too, just something very nice and wearable. And the other lip liner I have is in the shade Drag. This one's more of like a deeper plummy mauve shade, so that's Drag and that's Ride. So those are both really pretty. They're both pretty deep, pigmented, darker lip colors, I would say. I would say that... The ride shade is a little more like everyday wearable flattering and this one's a little bit more like a deeper party kind of lip. So let me just take a look. I'm not sure which liner I want to use. So the drag liner, the Rose Bitch Cream to Powder Liquid Shadow and the lip gloss that I'm going to use which is in the shade Enchanted. They all came in a set together called like the House of Rose Bitch. So I'm wondering if I should use the drag lip liner because it's like part of the set. So I think I am gonna go with the shade drag just to kind of keep the set and I feel like the eyes are a little bit more plummy and cool tone overall even though there were some warmer bricky red shades as well but I just think the lid is really popping with the purples. So I'm gonna use the drag lip liner That's a pretty color. So this liner does feel really nice overall. It definitely smells like a pencil, but and it definitely has like a little bit of that harder texture, but it's still pigmented and creamy enough. It's a little bit more pigmented and creamy than a MAC lip liner. I actually really love the pencil MAC lip liners because they have that tug um, and they just really kind of like lock in the lip line and the lip look. But this one is a little bit more creamy, but it still has enough of that stiffness where it's not sliding all over. And it's very nicely pigmented, I, and it glides on nicely. So so that is the shade Drag on my lips, just a lip liner. That is a really pretty color. It's really flattering. It's a little bit deeper, a little bit more cool tone, but it's not too deep. It's not too cool tone. It's still a nice, pretty flattering color. And now I'm gonna go in with the Enamored Lip Gloss. Yeah, these lip glosses don't have a scent to them. They have like a very, very slight, like chemical-y scent if you really, you know, think about it, but nothing too crazy. Like just normal application, you wouldn't really notice anything. And this is going on really nicely. Kind of like swatching it out, it feels like a little bit of a thicker formula, but once it's on the lips, it feels pretty thin. Pretty nice, not sticky. And I like this color. It's just like a little bit of like a sheer opalescent kind of sparkle with a clear base. It just adds like a nice sheen to the lips underneath that lip liner. I'm gonna finish off my face by setting it. I have the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Ultra Fine Mist. I really tried to talk myself out of getting this because I definitely didn't need another setting spray. And it's a small bottle, I feel like, and it was $28, which is pretty expensive, but it's like a really cute looking bottle and the mist is really nice it's super fine and it smells so good it's really really nice it has hyaluronic acid in it so it supposedly plumps up a little bit and it's just like a really nice experience so i'm definitely happy i have this so i'm gonna set so this is the completed look i think it, everything came out really pretty it's a really glam but like really feminine look especially for something cool tone i still think it pulled off like a flattering feminine look it's not too harsh this look so i really like it i'm really happy with how everything turned out as for the house labs products i think that they were all pretty nice if i were to recommend if you didn't want to get the whole line if i were to recommend some products over others i would definitely say go with the lip products the lip liner and the lip gloss are really really nice they have a lot of really beautiful flattering shades and the formulations are really nice the lip liner is 
nice and creamy, but I think it's gonna hold in place. It's like not bleeding. I have like a lot of lines on my lips. Um, like just like creases, like instead of getting crow's feet, I'm getting something similar around my lips. Um, so even lip liners and things like that, if they're super creamy, they tend to bleed out or like lipsticks or whatever. But this one's definitely, it doesn't seem like it's really bleeding out. So it has enough stiffness, but it was very creamy, very easy to apply, very pigmented. And this color drag is super beautiful, super flattering. And the gloss feels really nice on the lips. It's a lot thinner, it doesn't feel so thick. It definitely doesn't feel heavy or sticky at all, which is really nice. But yeah, I really think the lips are really beautiful and I wanna get the shade Corset that they have, the, um, lip gloss it's just like a peachy nude lip gloss i would love to have all the lip products in the line to be honest maybe eventually you know i'll be able to get them and i'm also excited to see what else she comes out with i'm hoping she comes up with like highlighters and different things like that that would be really exciting eyeshadow palette i think that'd be really sick and i'm really keeping my fingers crossed that we'll see that in the next couple of months and you know i hope she expands the line quickly as opposed to slowly but for the initial launch, I'm really happy with these products. I think that the liquid to powder eyeshadows, I think that they're really pretty. I think that they look better swashed than they do on the eye. Also, because I have smaller hooded lids, things tend to like bunch up and crease and they, you know, I don't have as much space to work with. So maybe if you have like bigger eyes, like you can really get this like really cool, like super micro glittery shimmery effect on the lids that really would show off and pop. But for me, it's it has like a nice wet looking sheen to it. I do see the sparkles, but it's not quite as insane as they look swatched out. And they worked pretty well with the powder eyeshadows. I had a little trouble on this side, not so much on this side. But overall, I do feel like they worked pretty well with the powders. They were easy to blend. They I really didn't get that powder feeling. Like it didn't seem like they dry down like at least when I was blending them out maybe like now they're like kind of like powdery on the eyes but as I was blending them out I was kind of hoping I would get that like cream to powder effect where it would kind of become like a powder eyeshadow and blending it would be like seamless with the powder eyeshadow the actual powder eyeshadows I used but I felt like it didn't really do that it stayed very sheer and like liquidy throughout the entire blend but since it is a little more sheer, it was easy to blend. I didn't feel like it bunched up horribly. A little bit on this side, but not too bad on this side. Overall, I think everything looks seamless, especially because I went in with, you know, liquids and powders, you know, kind of simultaneously, I kind of mixed everything together. I think that the result could have been a lot more disastrous than it was. And the eyeliner, I definitely prefer my Tattoo Kat Von D Trooper eyeliner to this. This is just like a little bit thicker, a little bit harder to work with to get precise with, and I'm kind of... I have trouble with liquid eyeliner. I'm not definitely not a pro at it. It's definitely a struggle for me. So, I mean, I was able to get it there, work better the second time than the first time. Maybe there's just a learning curve, but it's, you know, it's a black eyeliner. I would definitely recommend the lip products above all else in this line, although the rest of the products were pretty nice. There wasn't any real issues with any of the products. And the Pat McGrath palette, I did enjoy this. I really do like these more like baked kind of shades over here. I think that this purple performed really nice and then this sparkle was like a nice little glittery topper moment. I think that was nice and this shimmer is nice and pigmented so the regular shimmers seem nice and pigmented. The mattes were decent, a little bit patchy, not $125 worth palette quality. I feel like it was a little bit disappointing in the mattes. I could have done a little bit better there but I think the color scheme, I'm glad they did do more mattes. I feel like she needs to step it up just a little bit more with that matte formula for that price point, but I like really like the colors in here. I think that they work really well. I wanna try this green shade in the palette. I think that this is my favorite color scheme she's done so far. So anyway, that completes this video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and have a good one. Bye guys.